here at the Wealthy Idiots, we're trying to learn, trying to figure out as much as we can about all this finance stuff and bring the most accurate information we can. We've been somewhat successful in our endeavors and we've been researching and trying to find as much stuff out for ourselves and we want to bring some of that to as many people as we can so that people can be successful in their finances you know so when I'm wrong I want to make sure that I get on here and tell you you know and explain to you what I messed up on and try to you know kind of clear the record you know I want to be honest and learn as much as I possibly can myself and I'm still learning so when I mess up, I want to make sure I correct the record and let you guys know. But today, that's not one of those days. It turns out I was absolutely right. Let's get into the information. Hey everybody, my name's AJ. Welcome back to the Wealthy Idiot Show. Today we're going to talk about mortgage, amor am uh, um, mortgage amortization. Am amortization. I don't know. It's a big word that means some serious stuff and we're going to get into it. So what I was referring to earlier on is I made a video talking about how it does not make sense to pay your mortgage off early if you are very dedicated to investing that money instead. Because in the long run, you'll build your wealth much more significantly than you will by paying your mortgage off early. A commenter made a point that Due to mortgage amortization, it may be in the interest of people to pay their mortgage off early because most people tend to move every seven-ish years or so on average. And because the mortgage amortization weights interest up front and slowly decreases interest over time, like interest and principal start to switch, then it means that they're actually paying a lot more now. And then as time goes on, they're paying a lot less, but they're already moved by then. So if you were to move consistently, you should pay your mortgage off early. And if you were planning on staying in your place long term, maybe you invest. Well, I, I responded back and I said, that's a good point. I'll have to look into that. And um, I think you might be right, but it turns out, no, I was right all along. The way mortgage amortization works is actually an improvement over time to that interest rate and I'm going to show you the numbers and explain why. But first I want to talk about what mortgage amortization is. So in my research for this episode I went into the history to find out where mortgage amortization came from and I found a really interesting tidbit I thought would be fun to share. The original mortgage in the United States, so mortgages have been around for a lot longer, but when the United States started doing mortgages like way before the 1930s, it would be a really short mortgage, like five years long, and you would only make interest payments on the mortgage. That's it, just interest payments. Until the very last payment, you would, re you would be required to pay the entire principal of the loan. So imagine you took a loan out for $500,000 to pay for a house, you bought a house, all you did was pay interest for five years, and at the end of the five years, you would have to show up with that $500,000 and pay it all back in one giant shot. That's how mortgages originally worked before the 1930s, and I thought that was crazy and had to let you guys know. So, what changed? The United States government decided to insure mortgages, and what that means is that they are going to cover a lot of losses for the banks if people, you know, as long as they're considered good lendees, if people turn out not to be able to pay. So banks became a lot more comfortable with uh, handing out loans and then um, housing values were increasing rapidly. So that made them even more comfortable handing out loans. And as time went on, we kind of developed the mortgage system we have today. Mortgages do some really weird stuff. So if you have a mortgage, you might have noticed that after a couple of years of owning it, your mortgage owner, your mortgage provider switched companies. So in my case, I had a mortgage provider called, I think it was like Nation Star or something, and it got sold to a place called Mr. Cooper. Um, what happened there is that they were able to prove I was a good lendee, or I was able to pay on time every single month, and that increased the value of my loan. And so someone else came in and bought the loan. So they actually paid in order to get that loan, and then now they're collecting on that loan that was given. But they didn't have to do any of the work in order to ensure that I'm a good um, Lendee. Some other people did that. I proved it and they're able to use that data to then turn around and sell my loan to someone else. So that happens quite often. Um, mortgage trading and mortgage buys. Some companies called like Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae who are kind of government-ish subsidized also will buy loans out. 
And that's where a lot of the banks make their money. They figure out if you're a good lendee, they take some interest from you for a couple of years and they turn around and sell it to someone else for a little bit off the top. And then they take that money and they lend it out again and they keep this process going over and over again. All right, so what does mortgage amortization do? So if you've ever looked at a loan for or a mortgage, over time, you're gonna notice that you're paying mostly on the first payment a lot of interest and very little actual principal on that loan. And as time goes on, that begins to switch until about the 15 year mark. And then you're gonna start paying less interest and more principal until eventually it's paid all the way off. That's called mortgage amortization. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about over at the Wealthy Idiots website. So we just added an amortization table to our mortgage calculator. So you can go and check it out yourself, but I'm gonna redirect you there and we're gonna take a look. All right, so if you take a look here, I've already added a loan amount for $500,000 at a 6% interest rate for 30 years. I put in 6% because it's starting to look like that's about the average for um, mortgages right now. Could be a little bit lower, could be a little bit higher. I think it's gonna go up sometime in the near future. So 6%, at least for the moment, is a good kind of middle ground where we can play with. And some of the stuff you're gonna notice is that your interest payment is huge and your principal payment is much smaller. So this is the first month of paying. So the first time you pay your bank. And I'm gonna show the amortization table. And you're gonna see as time goes on, you're paying less and less interest and you're paying more and more principal. And we're gonna shoot all the way down to the bottom until the very last payments. This is 360 months, so 30 years. This is the very last month we're paying 1491 in interest and we're paying $2,982.84 in principal. Uh, so this is a good example of mortgage amortization and how the bank calculates what it is you're paying as time goes on. Now, the reason that I was correct on this before and I had to sit down and, and do the numbers to make sure that I was correct and I did the numbers a lot to make sure I was correct because you know I don't wanna get on here and say the wrong thing but what this looks like to the normal person is it looks like you pay a really high amount of interest up front and you pay a really low amount of principal. And so then that means you're paying quite a bit of money on interest. And I even thought for a minute, like you're paying more than your interest rate because you're paying way too much interest. And then as time goes on, you're going to go beneath that interest rate and it's all going to balance out in the end. But that's how it would look you know, when you look at it on paper and I got kind of sucked into that for a second, but when you do the math, it turns out that your effective annual interest rate starts off at 6%, but it goes down every single payment because the way that this is calculated is it's calculated on the amount of percent you still have left in the loan every single month. Let me explain. So the way that you calculate the interest paid is you take the loan, so let's add a calculator here. You take the loan, let's say we've got $500,000 and we're going to multiply that by our 6%. And we would equal $30,000 would be a 5% or I'm sorry, 6% on our $500,000 loan. And we divide that by 12 months, we would get $2,500. That means that 6% over a 12 month period is $2,500 for that first month. Then as you, the second month, it turns out the interest rate only reflects what you owe left on the loan after that original payment. So every time you make a payment, it recalculates every single month, how much interest you have to pay, whatever the loan amount that's left over from the previous month. So that would indicate that as time goes on, your effective interest rate on your home it, every single year is actually less than 6% of your original loan amount. It's still 6% of your you know, remaining balance, but it's a lot lower than 6% of your original loan amount. So let's take a look. We'll go to 100 months in at 28 2,182 and 20 cents. So 2,182.20, we'll multiply that by 12. That equals 26,000, which is
only 5.2% of the original loan amount. So if you were to start paying this off, you would end up paying less interest. That's true. So if you move every seven years, you're going to end up paying less interest over the long run. That is true. But every single year you keep this loan, that interest, that effective interest rate keeps dropping. And if you're investing your money, presumably, you know, is the economy uh, on average, I mean, not right now, but presumably you're going to see an increase every year on top of that money that you invest. You're going to end up creating so much more wealth investing, even if it's just a small seven year period. So let's do the math on that just to make sure that we're correct. Okay. So doing the math, if you were to pay an extra thousand dollars into your mortgage over a seven year period, you would save 20,000 ish dollars, just a little bit over $20,000 in interest payments. So pretty good over seven year period. If you were to invest a thousand dollars per month at a average 8% return, you would end up making about 23,000 on your money. So it's pretty equal. It's not too much different. You'd make a little bit more money putting your money into investments than you would into your mortgage. But here's the main difference. If you were to put that into your mortgage and then stop at that point, then that would be it. You wouldn't see a return on that money. You would pay a little bit less interest over the rest of the course of your loan. Time would go on. Your loan would get paid off early and you'd feel pretty good about that. So you might, you know, I mean, you get a little bit of gain there, but if you were to leave this $107,000 into the market and didn't do anything else and just left it there for another, let's say 25 years, and you didn't do anything else, but just left it there, you would end up with $732,000. So you could put it into your home. You could pay off your mortgage. Like one of the People said in my last video, you know, you pay it off and then you could start investing or you could start tossing it into the market now and get to a point where you're just building wealth com on compounding interest and not thinking about it. And before you know it, your net worth has grown way beyond your belief. In the meantime, you're still paying your mortgage down. So by the time you get there somewhere near your retirement, you're still going to be paying your mortgage down. Your mortgage is still going to get to the point where it's paid off. Or you could count your home as part of your net worth, like you pointed out, if you really wanted to. And you could count what's in these investments. And you're going to be at a point that's much further than what you would be at if you were to just pay your home off earlier. So I want to encourage you to take a hard look at investing. I know this isn't for everyone. Um, you know, there was a comment that was really good, which was, you know, what Dave Ramsey is teaching doesn't go towards everyone. And that's a really good point. If you're not going to actually invest that difference, if you have a thousand dollars extra per month and you're going to go out and spend it instead of putting it into something, maybe paying your mortgage down early is better for you because once you spend that money or put it into your mortgage, it's gone. You never get to see it again. But if you are intense, if you do have the ability to manage this, and you are going to put money into investments and never look back until you get to the point where you're ready to start withdrawing, you know, 30 years down the line, then I would strongly encourage you to look at this hard because this is the way that's going to get you to the point where you can retire wealthy. You're going to have the money you want to do, and you're going to be able to be financially independent much, much sooner than if you were to just pay off your debts outright, even the ones with extremely low interest rates. So sorry, Dave, and sorry, uh, commenter, I apologize, but it turns out I'm right this time. And the longer you hold on to your loan, the crazier this looks for you. The actual effective interest rate on your initial loan, if you want to pretend like that's an investment, the, the uh, interest rate decreases dramatically over time until the average on like a 6% loan is about 3% over the course of the entire amount of the loan. And if you consider that inflation is around 3%, you're basically taking this money for free. You could turn around and invest it into something that's growing. And as time goes on, you're really gonna get to that great wealth. I know this was a confusing one. Mortgage amortization is an interesting topic, but if you have any questions, toss them down below. I'll answer them. Check out the table on our website, wealthidiots.com. You can play around with it and see all the interesting stuff related to amortization and Anything else on the website that you want to check out is super cool. So thanks again for stopping by. I'll see you guys next time.